want to relate this little story that happened. I think it kind of summarizes this idea of women in their purses and, and how much purses mean to some women. Um, I was in a movie theater about to watch a screening and I was sitting on the end seat and there was an empty seat next to me and there was another seat that was filled by another woman. And we're just sitting there, you know, waiting for things to begin. And behind me I hear, there's some, some other women sitting behind me, and then I hear a woman approach and join them. And she says, uh, what the woman behind me says to the woman that's just come, oh, um, you know, what a cute handbag. And at the same exact moment, the woman that was sitting, you know, just the other side of the empty seat from me, we both, at the, at the sound of that, we heard what she said and we both turned to look. It, it was like some, some instinct in us, you know, came on and when we heard handbag, we had to turn around and see it. The thing that struck me was how, you know, there we were minding our own business and when we heard the word handbag, it's like a light went on, it's like, oh, and we just, you know, and like a reflex action. And I think that um, it's something, handbags are something that mean a lot of different things for a lot of women and uh, it was just something that I took note of so that was sort of an inspiration for doing a documentary on this. Almost every woman has a favorite purse, but what makes it so special? What is it about women and their purses? Why are purses more than just containers for the random stuff people carry? Because of what's in it, it's very important to me. It's all connected. If I had a purse with unimportant things in it, why would I have a purse? More than a mere utilitarian container, a purse can be an incarnation of the person who carries it a miniature portrait or autobiography in cloth, beads, plastic, feathers, or vinyl. It is object, symbol, totem, and metaphor. It guards secrets and betokens femininity and fecundity. It is guarded carefully and held intimately next to the body. It is like another appendage, extra body part, third bosom, third eye, small womb, portable inner sanctum, or alter ego. Oh, um, I have a bunch of pictures, and I have breath mints, and a cell phone, and a brush, and Burt's Bees. That's a must. I keep, let's see, what do I keep in there? Everything. Wallet, cell phone, makeup. No, you know what? Everything that I need is in my purse. Like a digital camera, or glasses, and books, something like that. I have my wallet and my cell phone, and chapstick, and the makeup you wear that day you have to carry with you. I just try to carry the very essentials that I need. I don't want a lot of clutter. Whatever you would need in the course of the day. Yeah. I have toothbrush, toothpaste, <laughs> gum. Well, I don't keep that in there. But I do. Well, you know, you're gone all day. But you're, you're a chapstick or, or maybe a refresher of some sort. There's a lot of things that I don't need. Well, it has to be roomy enough to fit everything. So you gotta, like, when you're shopping for a purse, you have to take the paper out and, like, put all your stuff in it to make sure that it... Test drive it. Yeah, then test drives. And, like, compartments are totally essential. Totally, yeah. And it has to be comfortable. Like, you have to be able to, like, put it on your shoulder and it has to be... Comfort is a big factor, too. This one's kind of worn because I, I can't find one like it. God, I wish I could. It has enough pouches, but not too many. You don't want something that's super bulky. It's more than just functional to me because I have to make sure my purse matches me, whether it's matching like my belt and my shoes or it just matches the color I have on. It's very important that my purse isn't too heavy, and it has to be coordinated in some way with something I have on, but I'm not going to spend $400 for a purse, although I have. I work in a very male-dominated industry, and for years I didn't want to carry a purse. I felt that I had to be uh, create an appearance where I was equal to the men that I was competing against. I would carry my wallet in my back pocket like men or uh, put my wallet in um, the pocket of a coat. And then as I got older and became more established in my industry and became more confident in myself, I realized hey, if I want to carry a purse, why not? So I decided to go purse shopping. And I now own 
three pocketbooks. This is one of them, and I love my pocketbook. And I, I now I'm a purse fanatic. This is my bag. I uh, actually I call it a, a bike bag because that's really uh, what it is. Uh, I started using it about four or five years ago because I do a lot of commuting or used to do a lot of commuting by bicycle. So I really needed something that was small enough and uh, comfortable enough so that I could carry it on my back while bicycling. It was very efficient and very effective way to, to carry all my stuff. Um, I know that these days uh, people now kind of derogatorily <laughs> will refer this to as a man purse. And uh, even though I kind of laugh at that and I find that a, you know, a kind of a, a, a humorous name, I, I kind of bristle at that sometimes because uh, um, I don't see why a man can't carry his belongings in a, uh, a bag slung over his shoulder without it somehow being deemed effeminate or something like that. It was on the street 20 years ago where I had my purse stolen and I was actually held up so I was facing someone and uh, it, you know of course that was a scary situation but I even think I got past that the harder part was getting past the fact that I no longer had my purse and I even tried to argue with the guy at the time which I know you're not supposed to do but I I didn't really argue but I asked him if I could give him my money um, but keep my purse and of course he wouldn't let me do that. And it was awful because it's really like having part of yourself torn away. There were things in there that would mean nothing to him. Um, prescription glasses and address books and um, you know, a little pad of paper that I wrote ideas down on, things I wanted to do or ideas for poems or things like that. And of course all that went. It was really, really difficult for me to accept that my purse was gone for good and I remember um, the next day early earlier in the morning I went back to the street where it happened and drove along trying to see if maybe he had you know taken the money and thrown the purse out um, because I just found it so hard to let go and even to this day when I think about it sometimes I think I wonder what what I had written down on that little pad that I kept and uh, you know and I lost contact with some of the people that were in you know, my address book and I mean just it really affected my life and uh, you know bottom line is I think for women they their purses to some degree contain their <laughs> their essences their 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 lives you know and when it goes it's a uh, it's just a really really difficult feeling and you feel like part of you has gone forever it's like cutting off a limb or something you know well, I'd be pretty upset just because my cell phone has everybody's number and I don't have it written down ever anywhere else and I wouldn't be able to talk to anybody anymore. I got pictures of every last single one because of any come up missing. <laughs> I'm putting a report and I'm sending troops out to buy my purse. I'm Elizabeth Fry. I design handbags and jewelry and I've been doing it for about uh, six years. I look at a piece of leather, that's how I get inspired. I look at the leather and I go, hmm. I'll add some, some beads to this, I put a magnet here, I'll fold it like this, it'll be a great purse. Sometimes women's purses can be a little bit scary, depending on their size. I, I suppose I have a fear of purses, but I'm not sure it's actually fear. I just have a lot of discomfort when, in the idea of going into someone's purse, including my wife's, and I know pretty much what's in there. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I think I'm afraid it's too disorganized or I can't find things. And what I find usually happening is if I need something and she says, oh, it's in my purse, I'll start to go over, I'll start to open it, and I'm so uncomfortable, I'll just grab the whole purse, take it over to her and say, please, you find it. And I look inside and there's really nothing in here that should scare me, but I'm still uncomfortable with it. I. I suppose in thinking about this, I can think back, oh, my mother had tampons in her purse, but that was never a weird subject. It's just they were always there. And maybe I think of a purse as something so intimate that I shouldn't be in there. That may be behind it. That doesn't occur to me. 
uh, as I'm trying to go into my wife's purse. I just know I'm uncomfortable doing it. Well, I have a collection of purses made of a lot of different materials from different places. The couple of favorites are these two that are made of 1970s automobile fabric, Ford, I think, like 77 Ford. And then um, this purse is made from recycled truck inner tube. And um, they, it's just a very plain bag that holds up really well in the rain because it's rubber. These are the, my favorite pieces in my collection and I rarely use them because I'm almost always having to carry more than any of them can hold but um, they're really beautiful. I love them anyway and I've spent a, a lot of money on them but you know it's my special collection so <laughs> this one is really extraordinary because it has a reversible exterior. I love the engineering of this. The, it's a really wonderful thing for someone to develop, and I've never seen another one. This is a really beautiful little Art Deco purse, and it um, just snaps open, and it has a wonderful little coin purse inside. And it has this little flap on the back, and I always wondered what that was for because it seems sort of awkward to carry the purse that way, but an antique dealer once told me that it's so that women could hold their purses while they went dancing. And, and I just love that. <laughs> this is a Menadier, which I believe they were popular in the 50s. And they're very structured little pieces that give you everything they thought you might need. Hi, um, my name is Rosie Apostle and I am a purseaholic. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to show you just an iota of my collection. I have hundreds of purses that um, probably could put my son Anthony through one year of college um, with the prices of these purses. I like purses a lot because um, ever since I was little I've liked them but I think the older I got my weight would go up and down and purses are always the right size purses and shoes I have different purses for different occasions so you have your evening purse which can be small because you're not out for the whole day you have your day purse you have your work purse your weekend <laughs> purse so it really depends on you know one size doesn't fit all one purse isn't gonna Go it's the like whole shoes. week. So, yeah, you need yeah. a different pair of shoes for a different activity. Same with the purse. It's like a clothes, so purse can be different from the occasion. So different for the occasion anyway. Mm. an article that I got out of a magazine talking about something called purse parties and there's apparently a rising popularity for these. It's uh, for knockoff bags, designer knockoffs, where you know somebody's manufacturing these things and then 
they hold these private parties like Tupperware parties and uh, women come and they buy these knockoffs. The newest illegal thing to do and which I went to last month was an illegal purse party. And so it was on the news and uh, one of my girlfriends had a party and I went and I wanted to support her so she knew I wouldn't buy anything. But this is the closest that they come to an imitation. You can barely see the difference. Um, just the strap alone on this Louis was over $100, just, just a little strap. And it also makes me think about the women who actually, you know, can afford or not, but spend the money to buy the real bags, which can run, you know, up to thousands of dollars by these designers. And it, you know, as, as important as I find handbags, I wonder, you know, who, who are the women that go and spend, you know, over $500 for a purse? We are, we are those, those women. women. Uh, all these purses together, if uh, I were to add them up, would probably be about $850 somewhere in that neighborhood. No regrets. They're, they represent a time in my life that is no longer. It reminds me of uh, the uh, corporate stress that I used to endure, and this is the icon of it. May you rest in peace. <laughs> So I developed my passion for purses at a pretty young age. Uh, my mom has always been um, a lover of handbags. So, you know, when I was a kid, I would go shopping with her and even through my teens and 20s, it was always a ritual for us. And she'd call me and show me when she got her new bag. And it was always just a very exciting occasion. And she has handed me down a lot of bags throughout the years. So I actually haven't made any of my own expensive purse purchases until recently. but. Um, this is one of the first bags she gave me, and she just gave it to me a couple years ago when she moved, and it's a Louis Vuitton bag. I think she bought it in the early 80s. Um, she had just gotten her first job in real estate in Beverly Hills, so this was like a gift to herself. And I'm guessing, I mean, a coworker just bought the smaller version of this bag for 600 so I, I, I'm guessing this was at least five or six or seven hundred dollars, you know. 20, 20 years ago. I finally made my own expensive purse purchase, and I bought this Tano bag from Fred Siegel. Uh, it costs about $270, and that includes tax. For me, the justification of spending a lot of money on a purse, to me, was more than uh, justifiable because I was in a line of work where you had to present yourself in such a fashion. You were calling on high-level people in the advertising community. Uh, they expected you to represent a particular product in a certain way, and having the clothes, having the accessories, having the purses, having the the briefcases that emulated a certain lifestyle to me was a necessity that I felt was, you know, investment that was definitely worth it at the time. I feel completely justified with my purchase. I, I tend to look at things in cost per wear, so I feel like if I, you know, spent two hundred seventy dollars on this bag and I'm carrying it every day, then it really doesn't seem like I've spent that much. At the end of the novel, Anna Karenina, the unhappy heroine, flings herself under the wheels of an oncoming train. We know she is going to end it all when she throws her red velvet handbag onto the tracks first. A woman who is sick of her handbag, surely, is absolutely sick of living. <laughs> it goes on to say, marked with life, stuffed to the gills, saved for, bruised, and cherished like a child, a good bag becomes an intimate extension of the body. I think my bags are a reflection of the life I am living, you know, not like the, I wish that's who I was, but like, oh, this is who I am, like, look. <laughs> yeah, mine's very utilitarian. Yeah, it's, it's like, exactly if I can't talk to you, you can look at my bag and get a clue. Yeah, you know? of who I am. Yeah. yeah. I definitely feel like it's an extension of myself. I, I would be really, I'd hate to lose my purse. Oh, and just such essential things are in there. Right. Keys, cell phone. <laughs> Pick everything. Up. Yeah, everything. Oh, I, I carry so much stuff and I keep going, like, why am I loading this? I'm carting this everywhere. But I can't be without it. And the one day that I leave that one thing behind is the day that you need it. So That's it's right. Like you just, you know, you take it with you. I take way too much stuff with mine.
Well, and I find, yeah, yeah. I find it changes. Yeah, I find it changes over the years. When I was a mom with young kids, yeah, I had a twenty-pound bag with yeah. you know every <laughs> possible thing bag. that you might need. Right. And now that I don't have to have all that stuff, you know, my purse is considerably lighter. Yeah, but you've given it up. I have yeah. given it up, and it's freeing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you do it day to day, like I go through my bag every day and just go, okay, well, I don't need this note of things to do, and I don't need this. And I try right. And you have lighter, and then. <laughs> well, you have to, otherwise it just like you weigh I know, yeah, 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 it weighs it down. So my handbag uh, looks like a rucksack. <laughs> and that's basically what it is. I have everything in here, everything. Wow, My heavy. phone, <laughs> I have my uh, identity badge for work, which I keep on my handbag because otherwise I'll forget about it. I have all my travel stuff in here. My tea bags, just in case I get <laughs> stranded somewhere. <laughs> And my neck rest. <laughs> no, yeah, that goes with me everywhere. <laughs> and then the other side is my makeup, that which takes up half the bag. And then on the inside, just in case I get stuck somewhere, I always, always, always carry a book. But when I go out in the evenings, this is too much. So I usually, <laughs> I usually switch to this. And what I take in that is my lipstick, a comb, my uh, cell phone, and then see what I love about this is when you're going to parties, <laughs> you can do this, <laughs> and you can't when even you see it. it. When you're coming or going. And it's perfect. <laughs> I mean, that's just, to me, this is the perfect handbag. <laughs> so you don't actually look like a lush. <laughs> even if you got that. So, you know. I'm going to start with a bag that sort of tells you something about me. Um, this is a Maori kit bag, and I'm a New Zealander. He didn't have already guessed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a friend of mine sent me this for my birthday and she said to, when she saw it that she just thought it was crying my name and I just love it. <laughs> but um, I have a collection on my wall at home that I've been collecting of bags, but they're all natural coloured ones, whereas this one, this one I use, so the others go on the wall. This one I got at the Westwood um, Farmer's Market a few years ago by, it was made by um, a wonderful woman who had all these great bags that she made by hand. Oh, wow. And they were all different feathers. And this one wasn't actually my favorite one. The favorite has a little oh. mirror inside. Wow. Oh. <laughs> this is another, it's like, it's like, I don't know if it's a purse or a makeup case. I think it's a purse. Yeah. <laughs> but I like to carry it. It's got these totally like little retro yeah, stars. Retro, yeah. like, and then it's hopefully the mirror will fall out like this. Sometimes the mirror falls. Oh, it's like yeah. a little suitcase. Yeah. That's so cute. Yeah, I'd actually go with a couple like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. good for like going yeah, out to like rock shows or nightclubs or something. See, but I, I, I can't carry bags yeah, like that because I'm always so afraid I'll leave. I'll put them uh, just put it under your and you know I'll never I pick like it up them? again. That's why the shoulder. So you put it under your How do you carry that? Well, this one? one I'll just carry. But for me, if I go to certain places, sometimes I'm a little shy or I get nervous. Yeah. So if I have, I have, you know, if I have something in my hands, I feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you know how it's you like have that. A cigarette. Like, yeah, like yeah. a cigarette. Yeah. You have, it's like, what do I do with my hands? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, but it's like, if you have a handbag, you can, you right. can have something to kind of clutch. It's like, yeah. a, like a security kind mm -hmm. of thing. So. Oh, and the funniest. That is oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> this is the fabulous phone purse. As you can see, it's both fashionable and functional. I think it dates from about 1975 or so. It looks very 70s with a red patent leather. Just It's very swinging about town kind of purse. There's actually oh, that's a phone jack. If I wanted to talk on the phone purse, it has a phone jack here. Um, I would plug it in. Great! It's, this is like my, my Mission Impossible That, is, a, that is so cute. Okay. Here's the on and off. <laughs> you can actually oh like, turn it on. It's pulse, so it takes forever. Hi, Gwen. Hi, it's Carolyn. How are you? Yes, I'm calling you from my purse. I haven't actually used it as a purse yet. I haven't taken it anywhere because I'm just, I don't want anything to happen to it. It's, it's very special. Uh, <laughs> pocket books, yes. as my friend from the East Coast used to call them. <laughs> but it is true that everyone's bags 
when we just look at it, what we've got all brought, it's yeah. really different, hey? Yeah. Totally yeah. different. Well, we're all different. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. All the reflections. So. It is. It's a very personal thing. Mm. <laughs> Oh. Yay, oh. chocolate! Oh. Are they not fabulous? It's so hard to choose no. just as in real life. <laughs> not the right colors, yeah. but which one? Is that is so yeah. adorable? This is a first cookie. It's kind of cool because I know. You know. Oh. Hello. One of these is going home with Wendy today, and then she'll always remember this special day. And I will feel good about it. I'll feel really good. It just makes me happy to give them away. Uh-oh. Wow, I feel like I've been given an Academy Award for myself. <laughs> <laughs> 